professor Mujahid, associate professor, anatomy department of medical college, Dow University of Health Sciences. And the learning objectives of today's class are at the end of the lecture, the student should be able to identify the appendages of the skin. And uh, all the appendages are discussed in detail. What are appendages of the skin? So by definition, the skin appendages are epidermal and dermal derived component of the skin. And that includes hair, nails, sweat glands, sebaceous glands. So the skin appendages are actually the skin associated structures and they serve a particular function, including sensation, contractility, lubrication, and heat loss. And the most important thing that is written in the first line is that they all are derived from epidermal and epidermis and dermis. So they are having their origin from ectoderm as well as the mesoderm. Now this is the diagram that is showing the structure of all the glands which are found in association with the skin and they are the part of the skin appendages. So starting from here, the sebaceous, sebaceous glands. The sebaceous glands, they are over here and they are identified by their intimate relation with the hair follicle. So this is the hair follicle and they are always in association with the hair follicle. And these sebaceous glands are meant for the oily secretion that is sebum, which is poured to the surface through the opening of the hairs. So they are actually greasing the hair and they are opening through the opening of the shaft over the surface of the skin. Now we can see this one as having a duct and the lower secretory coil portion, which is actually the sweat glands. And these sweat glands are of epocrine variety because we have other type of sweat glands, which are the crime variety, or they are also known, known as the merocrine. So this type of crime sweat glands, they are also going to be uh, present as a part of the appendages of the skin. Then we have the second type of the glands, which are named as ectine glands, or ectine sweat glands. So these are together included in the sweat glands, which are the coil tubular gland. And if we see the gut section of the skin, this upper part that is lined by the epithelium, it is actually the epidermis. And the lower part that is much more in thickness as compared to the epidermis, it is actually the dermis. And it is the dermis that is containing all the constituent part of the skin, skin appendages. Now the skin appendages. Right. Uh, the skin appendages, these appendages come from the epidermis and help to maintain the body homeostasis. So as I have already showed you, we have cutaneous glands, which are sebaceous glands, sweat glands, we have hair, hair follicles and the nails. And this diagram is showing all in one. That is, these are the shaft of the hair, which are, which are seen on the surface of the skin. And this is the structure of the hair that is going to be invaginated from the epidermis to the whole thickness of the dermis. These are the epocrine sweat glands, which are nearer to the, uh, or in the vicinity of the hair follicle, while these epocrine type of the sweat glands, they are present separately away from the hair follicle and they are, their ducts are going directly to open over the surface of the epidermis, right? We have different portions of the hair like this long cylindrical portion is named as hair shaft and this hair shaft is have multiple, multiple covering, right? So what we can see in this diagram, we can see, we can discuss and we have later much more, uh, uh, you can see the uh, magnified diagram which are showing the structure, internal structure of the hair. So the hair consisting of the outer layer which is the cuticle, then we have cortex, then we have the central portion which is in the name of the medulla, then it's having different coverings in the form of the internal root sheath. We are also having the external root sheath, right? So all these are forming the structure of the 
uh, here. The appendages of the skin are uh, includes hair, nails, sebaceous glands, and the sweat glands. Now, again, look at this picture. This portion is for the epidermis, and this were all forming the dermis, right? And the lowermost part of the dermis is also named as hypodermis. And usually, they are included in only one the structure that is the dermis. Now, the um, epidermis is seen to be raised from the surface, it is separated to show you how it is going to be fixed into the dermal papilla. So we have dermal papilla and we have here the reciprocal areas in the epidermis to fix it with the dermal papilla. Now we can see the opening of the sweat glands, which are the ecrine sweat glands, right? These are again the sweat glands. These are the Pisanian corpuscles, which are for the, uh, for the um, sensation. And we have this uh, hair, hair shaft can be seen on the surface, right? And hair shaft is having the lower portion in the form of hair papilla, right? These are hair papilla. And this structure is the hair follicle. These are the associated glands with the hair follicles, which are obviously the sebaceous glands. And we can see the slip of the muscles, which are associated with the hair follicle. These are actually the erector pili muscles, right? These are the different layers of the uh, skin, like the uppermost layer is the stratum corneum, that is pigmented layer. Then we have a stratum germinative, which are collectively consist of stratum spinosum and stratum basale, right? So these are the structure of the skin epidermis. Now the structure of the hair, the most important skin appendage is the hair. So this is the structure of the hair by definition. Here are the keratinized threads, which are derived from the imagination of the epidermal epithelium. So we know that these are the epidermis, the epidermal epithelium, they go and invaginate to the inside of the dermis and they are forming the keratinized type of threads, the hair. So they are found over the entire skin and exception is the palms and the soles, penis, dorsal surface of the distal phalanges, clitoris and the pithia myeloma. These are the exceptions. Now there's a very simple diagram, but beautifully explaining the structure of the hair. It consists of hard keratin, right? The central portion is consisting of hard keratin and this is actually the medulla. Then it is surrounded by the, uh, the outer portion, which is named as cortex. Outer to the cortex, we have another layer, which is named as hair cuticle. So from outside to inside, we have hair cuticle, then cortex, then medulla, right? And we can see the sebaceous gland is going to be open into the shaft of the hair to reach to the surface through the uh, shaft of the hair. Now these blue colors are actually the, the strips of the erector pili muscles which connect the lower part of the hair follicle near the root to the surface, under surface of the epidermis, right? And we have soft keratin layer outside this cuticle layer, right? And we have other layers which are surrounding this hair structures and they will be uh, discussed in detail that we have this outermost layer. So this is the dermis, epidermal papilla, sorry, the dermal papilla. So it is going to surround the hair shaft and they are giving rise to a connective tissue sheath. And internal to the connective tissue sheath, we are having the external root sheath. And in between the two, we are having a glassy membrane. This glassy membrane is present over here between the connective tissue and the external root. And then we are having the internal root sheet, right? An internal root sheet, uh, we can see the inner surface of the hair. It is named as hair follicle. It is filled with the matrix. It is named as a hair matrix. And this is actually the root of the hair. Now the root of the hair is having uh, the connective tissue papilla, which is present at its base. So this is the papilla of the hair follicle. This is the hair follicle. This is the root of the hair follicle, right? So these are the structures of the uh, hair. It has a shaft, which project, this is a shaft, right? This can project above the skin and it is having a root, right? Because, which is embedded within the skin. So the root is embedded in the skin. The shaft is above the surface over the skin. Here it is surrounded by 
uh, hair root is surrounded by a tubular structure, which is the hair follicle. So this is the hair follicle consisting of epidermal and dermal elements because the dermis is also going to give the covering to this area. So it is also having the dermal and epidermal origin. Then you can see in this diagram, this cut section showing the different layers, like we are having the central area, medulla, then we are having the cortex, we are having the cuticle, and this cortex is also having the layer, which is actually the, uh, the that contains the pigment, which are in the form of the melanin. So this is the cut section of this hair shaft, right? This is the surface of the uh, epidermis, and we know that the epidermis consists of these layers, the stratum corneum, gautum moles, and the stratum lucidum, the stratum granulosum, the stratum spinosum, and the stratum basal. Right? Now we are having this area in deep in the dermis, which is the sweat gland, and the sweat gland is having the duct which are going to open on the surface. Now, association of the sebaceous gland can be seen in this diagram, and these are the erectophilus muscles, right? And this is the hair matrix. This is the dermal papilla, which is forming the hair papilla, and this is the covering of the shaft. So, the at the hair bulb, so we are talking about this area. At the hair bulb, the hair root and the epithelial shell sheet, they are blend with a mass of cells called the matrix. So, we are having the hair matrix over here. Now, this diagram is showing the shaft of the hair. This one is the hair. This is the dermal sheath, right? And we are having inner and the outer root sheath. So, this is the inner root sheath and this is the outer root sheath. This whole area is actually the bulb of the hair bulb. And in the center, it is penetrated by the blood vessels and filled with the connective tissue matrix. And this is named as dermal papilla. So, papilla is nothing but the indentation at the basal end of the hair bulb, right? So this is the bulb and this is the indentation. Associated with the hair follicle, observation gland, the rectophylae muscles, we already know about them. Now the structure of the hair in detail, we, as we know that hair shaft, hair shaft consists of uh, epithelial cells in three concentric region and forming the medulla in the center, the cortex, then cortical. So the medulla, it forms the central axis of the shaft. It consists of two or more layers of the keratinized cuboidal cells, right? The intercellular spaces of the medulla usually contain air. So keeping in mind, they always contain air. So here, this is the medulla, right? This is the medulla and this is the cortex, and this is the cuticle of the hair, right? And our outer cuticle, we have um, the layer of the internal sheath. This internal sheath, again, three uh, layer is structure, consisting of this cuticle, then Huxley layer, then Henle layer, so we all constituting the internal root sheath. Then outer do it, we are having the external root sheath, and it is embedded in the dermis. This is the hair papilla. And we can see the blood vessels going to invaginate and occupying the papillary region. So the cortex forms the main bulk of the hair. As we can see, the cortex is the most thickened part. It composed of long, flattened, fusiform, uh, keratinized, closely black cell. In dark hair, the cell contains melanin pigment. Between the cells, small air-filled spaces appear. Then cuticle consists of a single layer of the flattened, clear, Recognize cells and they are partially overlapping each other. So, this is the critical layer which consists of these. The cells are non nucleated except those present at the lower part of the root. Now, this is the diagrammatic presentation. We are having the epidermis, then dermis, and then these are the structures. And so, this is the hair follicle. Lower part is named as hair bulb. And the hair bulb at the bottom is uh, provided with the hair papilla, right? So hair grows at, a, at an average speed of two millimeter, two nanometer per week. After a specific period of growth, each hair ceases to grow and is lost and replaced. Now the color of the hair is due to the quantity of the melanin pigment and amount of the hair that is present in the cortex. The melanin sites which are present between the epithelial cells of the hair root, they form uh, 
from there they are going to be transported into the cortex of the hair right and they impart black color to it so they are going to occupy the cortical portion whitening of the color of the hair is due to a failure of the pigment formation and increase in the amount of the air in the intercellular spaces of the neck of the cortex and the medulla right so here again the layers different layers of the epidermis are shown and this is the structure of the hair having the hair shaft this is hair bulb hair follicle and the lower part is the hair bulb and the center of the hair bulb is having the veins and arteries is the hair papilla now if you look at this picture the hair shaft is occupying this one these are the different layer and these are the covering the outer root sheet you can see we have the lower portion in the form of the hair follicle and this is so this structure is the hair follicle this is the hair bulb and this is the hair papilla what is hair follicle it surrounds the root of the hair and is responsible for the production of the production and growth of the hair it lies in the dermis particularly in the hypodermis so it is the deepest structure of the or the deepest deeper part of the hair now the parts of the hair follicle so this hair follicle consists of what is structures so let's see the hair follicle consists of three parts the first part is the infundibulum the second part is the isthmus and the inferior segment so infundibulum it is the segment from the surface opening of the follicle to the level of opening of the sebaceous glands that associate with the hair follicle so from here till the opening of this this one this whole portion is the fundibulum that is extending from the surface from this that is extending from the surface to the opening of the uh, level of the opening of the sebaceous glands with the hair follicle then isthmus it is the part of the hair follicle that lies between the opening of the sebaceous gland and the attachment of the erector pilaris so this part is the isthmus part then inferior segment the inferior segment is the part of the hair follicle from the erector pili to the proximal end where it expands and forms the hair bulb so these are the part of the hair follicle so we have covering of the coats of the hair follicle as well so each hair follicle is composed of two major coats the one coat is the epithelial root sheet and the connective tissue sheet the epithelial root sheet the epithelial root sheet is the covering the that is derived from the epidermis and surrounds the hair root immediately next to the hair cuticle it is composed of inner and outer epithelial sheet so these two are the component of this sheet internal epithelial root sheet it presents the superficial layer of the epidermis does not extend above the entry of the point of the sebaceous ducts <coughs> from the inner part to it we have it has three layers and we have seen in the previous diagram three layers are shown and these are the three layers in the form of the cuticle so we can identify these layers from here so this one is the henle layer this one is the huxley layer and this one is the cuticle critical lies against the critical of the hair and single it is single layer of the hair flat cells which overlap each other we have huxley layer consists of several polyhedral cells and henle layer single row of the columnar cells right then we have, these are all the component of the inner epithelial root sheet and we have outer epithelial root sheet and the outer epithelial root sheet is this one we are having inner one we are having outer one it corresponds to the malpighian layer of the epidermis it is to matlab hai ki this is a continuation from the malpighian layer of the epidermis it consists of several layers of irregularly arranged polygonal cells and surrounded by single layer of the columnar epithelial cells connective tissue of the uh the connective tissue which are surrounding it they are also forming the dermal root sheet and they are lying out to the epithelial root sheet right we have a vitreous layer which is named as glassy layer and it is in the form of thin men it corresponds to the basal lamina of the epidermis so see all the layers which are forming the covering of the hair shaft 
than the hair follicle, they are actually deriving from uh, the multiple components which are formed in the epidermis. Like some of the layers are the continuation from the Malpighian layers, some are from the, as we can see over here, they are uh, the continuation of the basal lamina of the epidermis. So the glassy membrane is actually nothing but the basal lamina that is going to resonate along with the hair follicle. It composes of the amorphous substance in which they are embedded the reticular fibers. Uh, it is having a middle layer that consists of circularly arranged collagen fibers. With some elastic fibers are the layer which composed of pores, bundles of collagen fibers that runs longitudinally. Then comes the erector pylon muscle. So this one is the erector pylon muscle, which is an oblique bundle of a smooth muscle fiber, which are found in the dermis in relation to the hair follicle. Right. So, erector pylon muscle is attached at its one end to the papillary layer of the dermis. So, this one is the papillary layer of the dermis. And at the other end, it is attached to the connective tissue sheath. It is present around the root of the hair follicle at about middle of the follicle. So, this is the hair follicle. It is going to attach in the middle of the hair follicle. Now, this is the erector pylori muscle, right? This is the epidermis, this is the dermis, then this is the hair follicle, sebaceous glands, they are attached to the dermal layer of the capillary layer of the dermis, and the lower part they are attached to the middle of the hair follicle. It is innervated by sympathetic nerve fibers, it causes the erection of the hairs because they are present. At an, at an induced angle with their skin, and when they contract, they cause the straightening of the hairs and the pores, which are going to be open, and they will be loose flesh appearance. Function of the hair they are very easy. Everyone is aware of the function of the hairs, they do not perform the insulatory function. In case of a human, as the case with animals, they play an important role in the tactile sensation. And any stimulus that causes the deformation of the hair is, is transmitted along the shaft of the hair to the three nerve endings that are surrounding the hair follicle and is perceived as uh, the painful stimuli and the hairs are going to be squished. The second component is the nails. The nails can be seen over here and they are consisting of this whole structure that is exposed on the dorsal surface. It is the nail plate. And these are the lateral nail pores. The proximal portion, which is in relation with the skin pore, it is showing a whitish appearance and half moon shape appearance. This is named as Gilinula. And the portion of the uh, epithelial pore, which is surrounding this area, is named as Aponychium. And the layer which is surrounding this is named as Cuticle. So they are the hard, translucent, roughly rectangular horny plates that are present on the dorsal surface of the terminal phalanges of the fingers and toes, you already know. They are homologous with the stratum corneum of the epidermis, right? And they are extremely nice and compact structure. Now the structure of the nail can be seen in this diagram that nail rests over the structure or the matrix which is named as nail body. Right, and deep tooth, we are having the palings for the palings bone. Right, and this is the lunula, the portion that is showing the whitish appearance, the placentic shaped area that is very uh, hidden by the pole of the skin. Then, this is the area which is named as root of the nail, and this is the cuticle that is surrounding the outermost corner of the nails. So the nail plate consists of three parts, body that is visible, that is named as nail body. Then we are having the free edge, which projects beyond the skin. And we have a root, which is proximal part of the nail bed that lies in the skin pole. Now, this is again a picture that is showing the structure of the nail bed. This is the nail, the free edge of the nail head. This is the or nail bed, this is the interior of the nail bed, this is the critical layer, this is the nail pole, right, and root of the nail, and this all is the nail matrix. Body of the nail, uh, nail is translucent and appears in color, 
because it contained uh, but because it transmits the color of the blood vessels, a percentage white area lunula is the reflection of partly recognized cells in this region. The fold of the skin that surrounds the proximal and the lateral border is named as nail fold. So we know that the lateral portions are the nail fold. And the furrow between the nail fold and the nail bag is named as nail fold. The epidermis of the nail that consists only of a stratum basal and a stratum spinosum. That is a very important point. There's two layers thick point. The dermis of the nail bag does not be a typical papilla, but instead it shows longitudinal ridges. The epidermis of the nail bag is very thick. So we can see over here the structure again, the nail body is there. This, this is the nail bag. This two phalanx is there. We have arteries, nerves, which have broken in supplying it. This is the nail matrix, and this is the cuticle or the actinite. Nail matrix is generated zone and it contains cells which are in different states of division and responsible for the growth of the nail. Uh, the peritonite cells are continuously added to the proximal part of the nail plate, so the nail plate constantly slides forwards on the nail bed. So, average we have discussed, we have 0.2 millimeter per week. Nail keratin is actually consists of compactly fed keratin filaments in a matrix of amorphous substance. The peritonite cells, they don't desplanate because contain our protein. Here we are having the nail body. This is the hyponychium, the part of the skin that is below the nail, the free edge of the nail. The epidermis of the nail bed is continuous to study with the epidermis of the fingertip under the free edge, the stratum corneum of the epidermis, and is known as the hyponychium, as I told you. The stratum corneum of the proximal nail fold extends for a short distance over the key surface of the nail plate as eponite. Right? So the stratum corneum of the proximal fold is named as eponitium. So this one is the eponitium, and this is the stratum corneum, which is uh, present distally near the fingertip. It is forming the hyponitium. Glands of the skin, as we already told you about, we have sebaceous glands, we have sweat glands. So these sebaceous glands, they are identified over here. These are also the sebaceous glands. And the HNA stain section of the sebaceous gland can be identified over here. This is the lumen of the hair follicle, and these are the sebaceous glands, right? The cluster of cells which are forming the Sebaceous gland. So they are spherical or ovoid in shape, they enclose in the connective tissue capsule, as we can see over here. They lie in the dermis, but their ducts are going to be open into the infundibular part of the hair follicle. Mm -hmm. so what is the infundibular part? That is from the epidermis till the opening of the uh, uh, sebaceous gland. The duct and the infundibular part of the hair form the pilosebaceous canal in some other locations like lips, penis, labia minora, it directly open onto the surface. The most abundant okay. they are most abundant in face scalp but that's in the palm and the sole. So, sebaceous glands are not present in the palm and the sole. They are simple branch SNR glands or holocrine variety. Why, why they are named as holocrine? Because the whole cell is going to be lost along with the secretion. So, we have 5 to 10 SNI open into the gut system. These SNI, they are filled completely by the stratified epithelium. And the basal cells are low to voidal as a do we are having the stratified cells, the basal cells are always to body shape. The basal cells are larger and rounded, and they are going to produce, these are the basal cells, right? And they are going to produce 
um, yeah, lipid droplets as it contains large number of the endoplasmic reticulum. The cells move to the center of the SNI, right? Center of the SNI and accumulate more lipid and become polyhedral in shape. So they become polyhedral, some become hypnotic and disappear. Finally, all centrally located cells, they are break down using fatty mass. It is named as serum, which passes into the duct system. So these are the cells in the basal layer, right? And we are having the cells towards the lumen. Disintegrating cells, which are containing sebum, they are shown over here. So these cells are going to be disintegrated. So the ducts are lined by the stratified squamous epithelium. The secretions are under the control of androgen in both males and females. In male, it is the testosterone. In female, it's the combination of the ovarian hormone and the adrenal androgen, which are going to control it. And the function of the sebaceous gland is to secrete sebum, which causes the maintenance of the proper skin texture and hair flexibility. So, this is the hair canal or the hair follicle, the opening of the sebaceous gland into it. At the time of puberty, they have heightened activity, there is heightened activity of the influence of the endocrine. So excessively produced sebum accumulates and invaded by the bacteria and they rise to the acne. So the acne is a problem in the puberty because of the excess amount of the oil secretion on the sebum. Then we have the sweat glands. Sweat glands can be identified over here. These one and these one are the sweat glands. Classified into acne sweat glands, distribution, which are distributed all over the body. And they are simple tubular gland. These product by neuroprime method and they are present in abundance on the palm and sold and not present on the lens pairs. Terminal security portion is wide and light deep in the dermis. Duck travel through the dermis and epidermis and they are open by the thread pores on the skin surface. The secretory portion is lined by the epithelial or low columnar epithelial cells. Two variety of cells can be seen to be distributed over here the dark cells and the clear cells. The dark cells are the mute white cells, right? So we can identify the dark cells as these, and these are the clear cells, which are the, the structure of the uh, coil or the secretory portion of the sweat glands. And the remaining cells, which are found interposed between, are the myopithelial cells, which are for the contraction and release of the, the secretion. So they appear dark in the routinely section, routinely prepared section. The cells have narrow basal, basal area and broad apical parts. So we can see the broad apical part and the basal portion. They are basal and rarely touches the basal lamina. And they are showing under electron microscope, prominent Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, many cisterns of the endoplasmic reticulum, and abundance of the three other cells. And their broad apical portion is containing the secretory granules, glycoprotein, and they produce the mucoid secretion. Now, come to the clear cells. The clear cells, the mucoid diagram, these are the clear cells. These are the clear cells. Right, these cells stain lightly. They do not contain secretory granules, pyramidal in shape, broad basal area, and the apical portion does not reach the lumen. And they are, are canalic filling, which are present between the dark cells. Basal plasma lemma show the show infolding characteristic feature of those cells which are engaged in the trans epithelial fluid and electron electrolyte transport. They produce clear water secretion, they don't get a serious secretion, and these secretions they reach the lumen of the sweat lines to the intercellular canalic filling of the clear cells. Myopithelial cells are also found between the bases of these cells and they will help in the contraction and they will cause the discharge of the secretion by the contraction of the myopithelial cells. Duct of the sweat gland is highly coiled and lined by a stratified fibroidal epithelium consisting of two layers of fibroidal cells. The basal layer cells, they have Darkly staining ovoid nucleus, and they are containing large amount of mitochondria. Right? 
the myoepithelial cells and the intercellular molecule are absent in the duct of this veins. As the duct joins the epidermis, it loses its own wall, become a specialized passage through the stratified nervous epithelium. They are innervated by the polymagnetic secretion, and their secretion is produced in response to the heat and the nervous system. What about the sweat? Sweat is a clear fluid that is derived from the sweat glands. Its components include water, potassium, sodium chloride. Urea, ammonia, uric acid, right? And lactic acid. So these are the components of the serous secretion. Now the functions of the sweat are the temperature regulation by producing a film of moisture for evaporating, evaporative cooling, excretion of the waste products like ammonia. We have apocrine sweat glands also. The apocrine sweat glands are those which are found in a special location, like they are found in the axilla, around the areola of the breast, circumferential lesion, uh, and the uh, circumferential lesion of the areola and the labia myeloma. So these are the specialized location of the apocrine sweat gland. These are simple coil to the glands. The pretty portion is in the dermis or the hypodermis. Dug open into the canal of their follicle turns this to the sebaceous gland opening. So they are present just this to the opening of the sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland stuff. Lumen of the secretory portion is larger than the eccline gland. So we can see the difference. These are the eccline sweat glands, and this is the uh, epocline sweat glands. And they are lined by a simple epithelium containing single layer of the body cells or the low columnar cells. Lining epithelium, they contain oval nucleus, large amount of mitochondria, large quality apparatus, lysosome, etc. And it becomes functional at the body. Myoepithelial cells are found which are responsible for the secretion. And they produce a viscous fluid that contain protein, carbohydrate, ammonia, liquid, and certain organic compounds that may cover the secretion. When released, they are uh, when they are released in children, when they release the secretion, they are odorless, but quickly they are invaded by the bacteria, and that causes a decomposition that generates compounds and having this agreeable order, which is consisting of short chain fatty acids narrated by a genetic sympathetic nerve system, and this would be emotion, emotional and sensory similar. And thank you very much for the thank you very much for listening to me. And if you have any questions, you can text me because our uh, chat box is disabled because of some reason. If you have any questions, you can. I can see the chat box over here. So I think it's functioning. Hair bulb and hair follicles are the same things. No, hair follicle contains the hair bulb. Okay. Anusha Khan is asking about the hair bulb and hair follicle. With the hair follicle, is the structure that contains in its lower part, part the hair bulb. Some students are in the waiting or trying to let them in. Adipa Kalha. Uh, I don't know how to enter because uh, the moderator has allowed admitted all the students. I don't know what is happening. Participants. Do you have any questions? You can type your question in the chat box. I am here to give you answers.
Do you listen to me? Adhika is asking, do the apocrine glands shed off their apical portion and secretion? Yes, of course. That is why they are named as apocrine glands because they have mode of secretion. So their apical portion of the cell membrane is also lost along with the secretory products. 